And now it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Mike Vincent. So now taking out the leadership cards, we see Dunedain Warning. Uh, this has a cost of one. It is a signal and reads attached to a hero. Attached hero gains plus one defense. Action, pay one resource from attached hero's pool to attach Dunedain Warning to another hero. So last time we took a look at the Dunedain Mark, which gave plus one attack. And so we see a card that's thematically related to that one in that it's buffing the abilities of another hero. So I love Dunedain Mark for the plus one attack, and I equally love Dunedain Warning with plus one defense. Now we just looked at a Burning Brand, uh, so Dunedain Warning might be a perfect combo to go with a Burning Brand. So if you have a hero, you can pump up their defense um, by potentially two or three, and then put a burning brand on them and they will just be a defensive powerhouse. Um, or just any hero who you want to boost their defense, make them a little more hardy, um, Dune Day Morning is a good choice. It's cheap at a cost of one, and again has that versatility in that if you do decide to move it to another hero, you can pay a cost of one to move it around. Um, if you're looking at a hero who's just about to die, you just need that one extra defense to protect them, then this card could come in handy. So Dune Day Morning, a fantastic card. Okay, so the second leadership card we see is an event has a cost of one is called second breakfast so we see a hobbit here it looks like he's mowing down on something uh, it reads action each player returns the topmost attachment card from his discard pile to his hand so having just looked at two attachments um, and particularly something like burning brand there are certainly scenarios where second breakfast could come in handy. Um, it's nice in that it allows each player to return um, an attachment to their hand from their discard pile. And I think this one is really just gonna depend on the encounter you're up against. There's a few encounter decks which have treachery cards or when revealed effects that force you to discard attachments. And so if you have crucial attachments like a burning brand, um, or unexpected courage, sorry I had a, drew a blank there. Um, there's some very crucial attachments that might be really key to making your deck work. So if you lose those, this is one way for you to get it back. Um, and it gives you your partner a chance to also do it. It's too bad that it's somewhat limiting, however, um, if you lose an attachment early and you don't get this card until later in the game, it does have to be the topmost. So if you've had to discard a few attachments, um, the one card you're hoping to retrieve may be lost. So I think this card is okay. I wouldn't always include this in my deck, but if there's some crucial attachments in my deck and I know I'm in an encounter where I know there's gonna be cards that will force me to discard attachments, um, then I could see bringing this one along. So there we have second breakfast. Okay, so now we're gonna look at our tactics cards. Here we see our ally, Bjorning Beekeeper. He's quite expensive with a cost of four, has one willpower, two attack, one defense, and three hit points. He also has the Bjorning uh, keyword. His action reads, discard Bjorning Beekeeper from play to deal one damage to each enemy in the staging area. Um, so you're gonna probably look at this ally and say, hmm, with a cost of four, is this guy really worth playing? Uh, the tactic sphere, not particularly known for generating a lot of resources. Um, of course, there's something like the Horn of Gondor, which will allow you to generate some extra resources, or perhaps if you're playing a leadership deck, you'll be able to generate more, but he is quite expensive. There have, I think the, the thing with this guy is it's again gonna depend on the encounter that you are playing. Um, there's certainly some um, quests where the conditions on the quest force enemies to stay in the staging area. And so this is one way for you to take them out. Um, or if you're playing one where you're gonna have a low threat, there's gonna be lots of enemies building up in the staging area, and perhaps there's lots of enemies in this given encounter that have low hit points. So anyone with one hit point, he's gonna be able to take out. Or if you're building a tactics deck revolved around dealing direct damage, so if you have Fallon and if you have other cards um, uh, based on dealing direct damage, then this will play into that theme. So I think there's very particular situations and encounters where you might want to include this guy. Perhaps if you're doing a direct damage deck, you want to include this guy. But I would say in general, um, tactics have a lot of good allies, and I feel like for a cost of four, this guy has uh, somewhat limited utility. Um, he has an attack of two, which is okay, and of course with three hit points, and one, def one defense can take some hits. Um, 
So yeah, I think it's gonna depend on the deck you're playing against and the deck you're wanting to play with, but um, a bit of a prohibitive cost in my opinion. So in our last expansion, uh, we noticed that there was a few Eagle cards and we see that trend continue here with Born Aloft. Born Aloft is an attachment, it's a conditioned attachment, and has a cost of zero, which is always nice. It reads, attached to an ally, an action, discard Born Aloft from play to return attached ally to its owner's hand. So um, clearly, this is a card that would combo very well with your powerful allies that have special abilities. I think Gandalf immediately comes to mind, or some like Bayorn as well. Um, so all you have to do is discard this card and return an attached ally to its owner's hand. So if I had Gandalf in play, it allows you to use his powerful abilities like drawing cards, dealing damage, or reducing threat. And then you can play this on him, return him to your hand, and it gives you a chance to reap those abilities more than once. So for a cost of zero, I actually feel like this card is pretty good. Um, the fact that it's free and um, yeah, just keep in mind, cannot be used on heroes, so you're going to want to use this on an ally worth playing. Uh, so I think, again, Gandalf or Bayorn being two great examples. So we see another continuing trend here with the Song of Wisdom. Uh, last time we noticed a song that gave the leadership resource icon, and this one will give the lore resource icon. So it has a cost of one, is a song attached to a hero, an attached hero gains a lore resource icon. So we took a look at a card earlier this video, uh, with a burning brand and so this is a perfect card for giving a hero who's not lore um, giving them the ability to use a burning brand and also if you're playing um, a dual or tri-sphere deck and you're wanting to be able to generate resources faster or lore resources faster then you will want to consider a song of wisdom so songs in this uh, vein really most useful when you're playing a multi-sphere deck um, but again uh, we look at a card like Burning Brand, which can be really crucial anytime you have to defend against nasty shadow effects. And so a Song of Wisdom is one way to play that on any hero. Um, in one of the newer expansions, uh, if you've played with Baragond, who has a superior defense of four, he could be a very prime candidate for a Song of Wisdom and a Burning Brand. Okay, so that concludes our look at the player cards for the Conflict at the Carrick. Uh, like last video, I said I'm going to go ahead and pick my three favorite cards from each adventure pack. So for this one, uh, a Burning Brand is a no-brainer. Uh, this card has come in handy so many times. Um, it can make any defending character just a tank in terms of defense. Um, being able to defend against so many nasty shadow cards is so essential. And if you put this on any hero with a high defense, um, you're going to be in pretty good shape. So a Burning Brand, almost essential in my opinion. Frodo Baggins, I think, is a solid hero. Um, Spirit tends to lack a uh, good defender, so the fact that he can just take any amount of damage and put it as threat, uh, and given that Spirit has lots of ways to reduce threat, I think makes Frodo Baggins unique and uh, certainly very usable, particularly with the Black Riders expansion that just came out, and so many neat cards that work very well with Hobbits and build up Hobbit synergies, making Frodo Baggins just that much better. Um, and finally, last week I gave Dunedain Mark um, my recommendation, and we'll also do so with Dunedain Warning. I think just being able to pump up um, a character's, uh, sorry, a hero's defense is essential. And again, if we look at boosting defense with a burning brand, just a great combo uh, to be able to take a hero with two or three defense, make it four or five defense, put a burning brand on them, uh, and you're pretty much good to go at that point. So these would be my three favorite cards from this adventure pack. As a buyer's guide, I would highly recommend this expansion. Um, I think the player cards are great. Um, a burning brand, I think, is almost essential. Um, there's some really good Rohan cards. There's the Song of Wisdom, which will allow you to um, make any hero have the resource icon for lore. And Dunedain Warning, Frodo Baggins. There's just a lot of really good cards in this deck. And I think if you're only able to buy a few expansions, I think this would be one worth considering. So thank you very much for watching. Uh, next week, we're going to take a look at the Journey to Rosgabel player cards. Um, so have a great weekend. Hopefully you get to play some Lord of the Rings living card game. And we'll see you next week. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff.
in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. <laughs>